What's going on, everybody? It's Beach Bum Vapor here with daily video number five. Um, today, I want to talk to all of you about a uh, misinformation about the vaping community and facts on vaping. Uh, a lot of people share, even even the vapors on Facebook share these videos and news articles that put us down, don't have correct facts in them. Um, there's one recently going around from the Dr. Oz show which uh, I, I don't put no faith in nothing Dr. Oz says. He, to me, he's a quack. But, uh, yeah. Um, so I'm going to play this video, and we might do a little talking about it. So, again, this is uh, from the Dr. Oz show. Uh, let's head to it. Joining me now to help break down the facts about e-cigarettes is clinical assistant professor at NYU, Dr. Natalie Azar, who reports on the latest health headlines and those trends. Dr. Azar, you reported a lot on these e-cigarettes. I have, yes. They don't have tobacco. What do they have in them? I know they don't have tobacco, but they do have nicotine. Nicotine is tobacco derived. All right, right there. Nicotine is tobacco derived. Yes, nicotine does come in tobacco. But nicotine also comes in uh, many fruits and vegetables. I'll name you three right now. Potatoes, tomatoes, and eggplants. Um, so nicotine is not just a tobacco product. In the e-cigarette, uh, it's actually liquid nicotine. Plus, and here's sort of the whole, the whole you know, investigation part of it. What else is in there? They have certain additives. They may not have as many as real cigarettes. We know that e-cigarettes don't have that many, but how many do they have and what do they really have? And then, of course, the question is, the e-nicotine is actually in this liquid form. It's heated up and vaporized, inhaled into the lungs. That's what we know. So All right. So basically, she just said we don't know what's in there except for some additives and uh, liquid nicotine. Um, hello, dumbass. Do your research. Uh, Look at a bottle of juice every once in a while. You have vegetable glycerin. You have propylene glycol. You have flavoring, which is normally PG-based. And you have liquid nicotine. So, um, duh, we know what's in it. So everyone, I think, I hope, is aware that cigarettes cause cancer and heart disease right. and all kinds of bad things. What do we know about the dangers of e-cigarettes? I get the theoretical issues. Right. So, the, yeah, the theoretical issues. But I think here we have to remember that e-cigarettes have really only been around for roughly a decade. That is not enough time to truly inform us in terms of the overall safety. There's basically insufficient data. Okay? We have Insufficient data um, on the safety and what it does to us. Well, I can tell you, a little over a year cigarette-free, been vaping. I breathe better. Here's my personal story. I breathe better. I feel better. I can taste food better. I can smell things better. Um, my house don't stink, but I don't have nothing to do with, uh, you know, personal effects. But, yeah. Um, so, and I know vapors have been vaping for six years, four years, three years. And they all pretty much say the same thing. And we don't go to the doctor as much. We've done enough studies is the bottom line. There has been a very off-sided study, which I personally really like, and that is that they did something called pulmonary function testing. That is, they looked at the lung physiology after people smoked e-cigarettes, and what they found were levels of inflammation, and what does this mean with long-term use? Are we talking about chronic obstructive pulmonary disease? Are we talking about emphysema? I'm certainly not making that claim yet or now, but I think it's important to remember that we may not be causing cancers from e-cigarettes, are we causing other cardiopulmonary problems? That is, problems in the lung, problems in the heart, after this thing is inhaled decade after decade. And we're not going to find this out for multiple years to come. This takes a long time epidemiologically to come to light. Okay, so then how come this is? Uh, there's been so many people who have put out research papers and x-rays and medical research of people with uh, this smoke for years, got terrible lungs, they went to vaping, and... Now the doctor says their lungs are healing. Holy shit. It, it's amazing what happens when you actually do a little research there. You mentioned liquid nicotine. Yeah. 
But what are the dangers of, of nicotine itself? It doesn't have the carcinogens in it. Correct. And the thing is here, remember that this is liquid nicotine. What, why is that so important? We're, and, and in the e-cigarette, the liquid nicotine is, of course, inhaled. But what happens if the liquid nicotine gets out? What happens if a child tampers with it and swallows it, for example? Or it's even put on the skin. It can burn. A teaspoon, a, I'm sorry, yes, one teaspoon can actually kill a small child. A teaspoon? So, of liquid nicotine. And in fact, over the last few years, there's been a, a rise of over 200% of calls to poison control centers, predominantly from children under the age of five. It's actually... All right, now here we go here. Liquid nicotine. Yes, a teaspoon can kill you, especially a child, of pure, straight, liquid nicotine. How many of you that go out, buy your juice, drip on your mods, fill your tanks. How many of you have liquid nicotine at your house? Um, probably, I would say, 99% of you do not have pure, straight, liquid nicotine. Those are the facts she is stating here. Facts from pure, straight, liquid nicotine. As far as you getting it on your skin and burning you, it killing you. That is pure, straight, liquid nicotine. Um, unless you're a juice maker, a DIYer, you don't have it. Bottom line, you have a diluted form of the nicotine in your e-juice. And I want anybody that sits there and drips and tells me they've never gotten it on their hands. You tell me you've never gotten it on your hands, I'm not going to believe you. But how many of you that are willing to admit, yeah, you spilled it on your hands, you're members of the Over Drippers Anonymous Club, and uh, how many times has the nicotine burned your skin? Hmm. I know my hands stay covered in juice almost all day. Um, now, as far as keeping out of reach of kids and pets, most definitely, because you get a small child, they drink this bottle of juice, yes, they're going to be sick, and you're going to need to take them to the hospital. But the facts she's throwing off here are for 100% pure, straight, liquid nicotine, which 99% of you don't have at your house. Really horrifying. But the issue, so for us, is that, okay, so you're inhaling it, so it's a little less, less toxic than ingesting it, but what are the long-term effects of vaporized nicotine? And that we don't have the answer to yet. Join me now to help break down the facts. All right. And now, you know, what's the effects of vaporizing it? You know, well, we everybody's been smoking nicotine for years. Vaping it probably ain't much worse. Nicotine ain't no worse for you than caffeine is, everybody. Uh, don't let none of these stupid-ass people fool you there. Um, Dr. Oz and that woman doctor he just had on his show there, they're nothing but puppets being led around by the government, being told what to say and do. Uh, put bad media out there on us and try to get us all taken out. Um, people like that is the reason why all of you need to follow CASA, the vaping militia, join some call to actions, make sure we keep our rights to vape, and uh, yeah, uh, you know, don't let dumbasses tell you the information that you're going around spreading when all the information is false. That's all I'm going to say for today. Um, tomorrow we'll have another video up. Uh, like I said, make sure you fight for your rights. And if you don't support advocacy, the door's right over there. Get the hell off my page. Keep on vaping, everybody.